Why did this monument come to be? Almost 50 years ago, in 1818, Sir Walter Scott, the novelist, recovered the crown jewels of Scotland where they'd been locked away in Edinburgh, and Edinburgh Castle since the Act of the Union no longer needed, you see. But the novels of Scott had inspired a reawakening in Scottish history, and when that reawakening always comes this period of national pride to Scots throughout the world, has fined fanned the flames. And people of Scotland wish to in some way remember this tribute to Wallace. Now, in the 1830s, it was decided that a committee should be formed to raise funds with the possibility of having a National Wallace Monument. But it wasn't until 1850 that the Reverend Charles Rogers, my friend and colleague, was granted the task of raising monies for such a project. <laughs> there were concerns that uh, the celebration of a man who had fought very fiercely in other parts of our country might cause irritation for those who held the puff strings. And so it was decided that the monument should be built by personal contributions. From the poorest to the richest in Scotland, from Scots, St. Patrick, Scots and the Empire and beyond, Garibaldi, the architect of the New Italy, committed funds to this building. And the Marquis of Butte was extremely generous. All joined together in the admiration for liberty and nationhood the name that Wallace inspires. By 1858, the princely sum of 3,387 pounds was raised. Competition was held for designs for the monument, and I won through. <laughs> it was a great tribute to be able to work on design. This new one. Now, previously, my experience had been almost entirely in Anglo-Gothic design, which would be called uh, Victorian. But this presented a great challenge to build something distinctly Scottish, incorporating the crenellations and vaulted patterns of our ancient medieval structures. Of course, this, <laughs> this did propose some problems. And although the monument not finished. In my specifications for almost a decade, it did run into a bit of financial trouble and ended up costing three times as much. But nevertheless, here it stands, 229 feet high, 246 <laughs> steps from base to ground. Testament to this great man. My friends, the stone that built that was even excavated here on the Abbey Craigs. I am no stranger to pomp and circumstance. I watched my countrymen turn it in their thousands to see Queen Victoria and her concert, or Prince Consort, Albert, come to view my royal arches in Dundee. But this, this is a different thing. This is new, and yet it is very old. On Monday, 24th of June, 1861, the people of Scotland had an opportunity to atone themselves for the neglect of their national hero. They gathered in the King's Park in Stirling from the early morning, for more than 80,000 people had arrived, boosting the population of Stirling to some 100,000. They progressed the procession here to see the stone foundation stone being laid. And the procession was more than two miles long. But, as I say, this was a different kind of thing. The people of Scotland had a chance, a chance to feel proud of the nation, the ancient nation in which they were part of. And why did they do it? Because of this man, William Wallace. Wallace.